Hey there, I'm Ari with the Tech Buyers Group, and I'm back with another product review. This time I'm going to be reviewing the Logitech G502 Gaming Mouse. And I know what you're thinking. Didn't the G502 come out, like, in 2014? Um, yeah, yeah it did. So, is this review a little late? Well, actually it's not. Uh, because this product right here, although you can barely tell, is called the G502 Lightspeed. Logitech is really, really subtle with its branding here. But the G502 Lightspeed is actually being released today, May 8th, 2019. About five years after the original G502. So what's the big deal? Five years later and we have the exact same look, right? If you've ever owned a G502, you'll recognize this. Frankly, if you're a gamer at all, you know about this mouse because the G502 is the most popular gaming mouse in the world. It, it has a huge following. It sells more than any gaming mouse uh, from any other company and potentially probably combined um, I mean this is just an incredibly popular mouse but yet this is not the original G502 what's the difference look ma no wires this is the wireless model and that's what Lightspeed stands for that's Logitech's branding for its wireless lineup of mice but Lightspeed's not new either in fact right over here I have the G305 this is also Lightspeed mouse and right over here I've got the Logitech G703. This is also a light speed mouse. So what's the big deal? Again, I, I have to ask, and you're probably asking, well, the G502 is something special in, in the Logitech family, in Logitech history, because it has such an advanced shape, such an intricate design. It's harder to manufacture this, period. And then when you add in the wireless technology that's inside here, Logitech really had to do quite a bit of engineering, and I'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, first, let me talk about what uh, you get on the outside with the Logitech G502 Lightspeed. Well, you get everything you had with the original G502. That includes 11 programmable buttons. You have the side buttons, two thumb buttons. You have the sniper button. You have the DPI selector switches up and down. You have the profile cycling button. You have the clutch or the DPI, the, well, the scroll wheel switch to go from free flow to uh, notch travel. Of course, you have the left and right buttons. And the middle button not only depresses, but actually can be pressed from side to side. You can hear that. So all of this is programmable in the Logitech uh, Hub app. They call that uh, the G Hub app, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. Um, now, as long as we're taking a close look at this, I'm going to note uh, what you have on the bottom, which is where you're going to see some differences as well as in the front. Let's start with the bottom. So you still have the classic you know, Teflon feet on the bottom. In fact, there's only one piece of this mouse that remains from the original G502, and I think it's this foot here, this Teflon pad. Um, it, it's one of these. Uh, everything else has been changed. So in here we have Logitech's G, uh, what they call the Hero sensor. It's an optical sensor that goes up to 16,000 DPI. Here you have the on-off switch. And under here, you have two possible things. This is actually the power play uh, insert that I'm using, which enables wireless charging with the Logitech power play mat, which is right here. This mouse was actually charging as long as it's face down. Um, by default, though, it comes with a weight kit and a weight tray. So in here, you can put a weight kit. I think it's up to 10 grams of weight, something like that. Um, and out of the box, this mouse weighs, I believe, 117 grams. Let's see what they claim. Uh, well, they say 114 grams plus 16 grams of additional weight. So you can go up to 130 grams. I don't know why you'd want to go that heavy, but you could. Um, and then, actually, we have a little caddy here for the USB uh, receiver, which I'm not using. And you may wonder why. Well, that's because when you have the power play mat, which I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to mention a few times because I love it so much. The power play mat actually has a receiver right in here built in, so I don't need to use a separate USB receiver. So I'm not actually using this receiver. The receiver's in the box. But in case you travel with your G502 Lightspeed, you can, you can hold it inside uh, your mouse. 
Now I'm going to put this tab back in there so I can use the mouse again. In front we have the, the uh, USB micro adapter right there if you want to charge by cable. Again, I'm charging by PowerPlay Mac. So uh, I don't need to use that charging cable, but you can if you don't want to invest in this PowerPlay mat. The PowerPlay mat is uh, about $95, so it's, it's a big investment, but it's an awesome mat. Uh, it's actually dual-sided, so, uh, or I actually should say, it's not dual-sided, it actually comes with two different mats. This is the uh, cloth one, and then there's actually a hard plastic one that comes in the box, and they both stick really nicely to the the charging apparatus, which is the, the lower part right down here. So this is the cloth mat I'm using. It's seen a few months of use, so it's a little bit dirty, but that, that happens, but it still works great. So now I'm going to give you some details of what's inside this mouse. What, what makes it tick? And why did it take so long for Logitech to come out with a wireless version of the G502? Well, to really understand that, let's take a look at a few other mice that I mentioned uh, that that are in the family. Here we have the Logitech G305 and here we have the Logitech G703. Now one thing you'll notice about these two mice that they both are in the light speed family and they both can you know have the same wireless performance is that they have a much simpler exterior shell. And so the exterior shell actually does require a little bit more engineering or I should say a lot more engineering on the G502. It has a lot more buttons that each need their own interfaces inside, their own support systems. Um, and of course the shell itself being so intricately molded uh, perhaps doesn't have as much of its own support and needs more internal support. So if you make a mouse that looks like this, you just kind of mold the plastic and mount everything inside and the shell itself is pretty self-sufficient, it's pretty sturdy. This has a lot more moving parts. Of course it has a lot more buttons. And that requires what they're calling an endoskeleton. So Logitech has created this new system inside that really supports all of the various components of the G502 Lightspeed, including all the buttons, all the electronics. That includes not just the wireless transmission, but the wireless charging. And you have your RGB. The RGB is fairly limited on this mouse. Uh, it's actually even more limited than it is on the G6. 703, which you see here, you've got that the logo and then the wheel, which I really like. Well, of course, the G502 is famous for its metal scroll wheel that people really love, and you can't put LEDs inside of, you know, you couldn't hollow out this metal scroll wheel and make it feel the same if there were LEDs inside. So there are no LEDs in the scroll wheel. You just got that logo, and technically you have lights here too that match. There you can see that's my DPI selector. Unfortunately, they don't stay lit. After you've selected your DPI, there they go away. But at least they match, which I like. Uh, I have indicated my displeasure with other manufacturers that have DPI indicators that don't match the main lighting scheme, so that's really cool. But that's the, that's the extent of the lighting. If you're Gaga for lighting, you're going to want to go with a different mouse and probably a wired mouse. I have a couple of other examples here that I really like. This is a Corsair Glaive RGB Pro, which I recently reviewed on the channel. It has excellent RGB lighting. There you go, up in front, scroll wheel, light pipes, logo, DPI selectors, um, really, really cool lighting. And also one of my favorites is this Roquette Cone EMP, which has uh, just one lighting feature, but it's a really great one. It's a, a dual colored light pipe on either side. So you can actually select, you can see I've actually selected blue and then something like pink in the back that caught, uh, creates a really blended effect, which is really, really cool. Now lighting like these two mice have requires a lot more power, which is why you don't see it in wireless mice, at least not if you actually want good battery life. So again, here's the G703 and here's the G503. The lighting's not going to blow anyone away, but at least it's there if you want it to match like... Here, here it is matching the logo on my PowerPlay mat. It's actually also matching the color scheme on my Corsair K70 keyboard. Um, you can set that in the app. So that's what you have on the exterior, okay? And people who have become enamored of the G502 are gonna love what they see here with this wireless version. It's a carbon copy. You know, every, to, to, to the last square millimeter, Logitech has really done a, a great job uh, reinventing the G502 
in a way that makes it the same as it ever was. And that is pretty amazing when you consider that everything else inside here is brand new. Um, so let me get into the performance a little bit. All right, I'm here in a game of Battlefield 5. And I just am going to flip through a few of the mics I have here to give you a sense of how they feel. Um, first thing I have to say about the G3, uh, the G502 uh, is that it feels extremely immediate, like it's an extension of my hand. Um, I point it, it goes where I want it to go. There's no sense of lag because it's wireless, which earlier wireless mice had. Um, truth be told, I felt the same immediacy from a number of other light speed mice from Logitech, including the G703, which I love so much. But let me flip over to the G305, which is also a light speed mouse. It uses a lower end sensor. It shouldn't have any more lag though because it has the same wireless system. But honestly, it's not quite as smooth. It's close, but it's not quite as smooth. And part of that may be because it's just not as comfortable to hold. It, it kind of floats in my hand a little bit. I can't get a good grip on it. It doesn't have any rubber sides. It doesn't have a sculpt, sculpted uh, hand grips. So it just doesn't feel quite as good, but it, it's still very good if you wanted a $50 mouse and you wanted to try wireless. This is a good option. It's, you really can't, you can't really beat the price. I mean, it's the same price as most, most wired mice. But it just doesn't feel, I don't feel as confident with it in my hand. Now, again, as I move my hand, I can assure you it's, it feels totally in sync. I am using a G-Sync monitor, which helps a lot. So if you're using a fixed refresh rate monitor, you're going to be kind of handicapped a little bit. Uh-oh, I'm coming under fire here. No, nope, couldn't get away. Um, they came in with, at me with three tanks there, so I was in trouble. Um, yeah, so this just uh, feels really good. That's all I can say. But I'm going to flip over to my Corsair Glaive here because I've liked it a lot in the past. Let's take a look. Now, the Corsair Glaive is a wider grip, which I like particularly when I have to move the mouse around a lot. And that happens probably more often than I would need with the G502 just because it's wired. So sometimes that cable gets in the way of things. Um, but honestly, it's not quite as sculpted as the G502. The G502 just feels like it's part of your hand. Um, it is a little bit narrow, but I got used to it pretty, pretty fast. And actually now, a wider mouse kind of feels a little bit clumsy in my hand, I'll be honest. So overall, I really like this mouse. I just wish it were maybe a tad bit wider. But other than that, the responsiveness is just unmatched, even, even by the best wired mice. And, and then you don't have to worry about the cable getting in the way. I can turn my hand any which way. I can, you know, I can go all the way across my mouse mat. And I never have to worry about, I'm, I'm going like 180 degrees here with my mouse. I don't have to worry about that cable getting in the way. That is just such freedom of movement that you can't have, just can't get with a wired mouse. So with that said, let me flip into the uh, software suite to show you what you can do with the G-Hub interface, and then I'll get into my conclusions. All right, here I'm going to show you the G-Hub app, which was recently completely redesigned from the ground up. And you can see that it includes profiles for all of the Logitech gear I have connected right now. Let's go into the G502 light speed. So you can set your lighting. As I mentioned, the lighting is pretty uh, limited on this mouse. Um, there is the primary lighting, which they're referring to as the, these are really the DPI selector buttons that, or uh, selector LEDs. And, and frankly, they don't light up unless you change your DPI. So primary is kind of like a misnomer there. Really the primary is the logo and that's right here. I can change that from you know basically anything I want uh, to anything I want. Um, I can also do a breathing. You can do what they call screen sampler which I guess takes a, a sample of your screen. Right now I don't I just have my uh, desktop here so it's kind of picking up I guess uh, kind of a white. 
Uh, and it's more interesting if you're in a game and say you've got a game with a you know a real fire in the background your mouse might turn kind of red or orange or if you've got water in the background it might turn blue it doesn't do much on a static desktop like this um, where the color isn't changing much and then you also have audio visualizer I haven't really messed around with that um, couldn't tell you exactly what it does but I'm just gonna go back to fix now uh, let's see I guess I'm on black which is not a great color is it <laughs> okay we'll go back here and then what else do we have? All of those button assignments. You've got all the top buttons, and then you also have your side buttons. Oddly, by default, you have two buttons programmed to the same function. Your sniper button, or what they're calling DPI shift, uh, is replicated right on top, DPI shift. So you may want to, you know, uh, remap that to another function if you want. Um, I guess they're doing that because some gamers want to reach up top to get into sniper mode. Others want to go to the side button, but anyway, they both do the same thing. Of course, you have all your other buttons here, right, uh, uh, right, middle, left, your scroll wheel back and forth, and then, of course, the scroll wheel actually tips from side to side, which is cool, and you have your DPI selector buttons, and all of those can be reprogrammed except for this clutch, actually. Uh, so, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there, actually, there are 11 buttons plus the hyper scroll uh, selector which you can't reprogram because that's actually a mechanical switch that engages the kind of traction on the wheel so that's not actually a, a digital button that's a mechanical switch so there you have it and then of course you can set all your dpis i've set mine pretty low although yes you can go up to 16,000 if you want to that would be really really fast or i'll just set it to i'll set my highest one to 16,000, and see you can see the mouse is zipping around the screen. I'm barely moving the mouse. But hey, you can do it if you want it. Um, let's get out of there. I'm going to use my DPI selector to drop it down to 1200 where I like it. All right, let's get out of G-Hub and um, get into the conclusions. There's no doubt about it. The new G502 Lightspeed is the best mouse in the world. I already felt that way about the previous G403 and the G703. Well, the G502 may not have a new name, it may not have a new face, it may not even have the not highest number in Logitech's Lightspeed lineup, but it is the best mouse in the entire Logitech Lightspeed family, and again, it is the best gaming mouse on the market. There's nothing, no one, that can compete with this mouse. The Lightspeed wireless performance is amazing, and the feel and the look are also both amazing. Now, those didn't change from the wired version that came out honestly five years ago but the sensor is better which gives it more precision and it's actually lighter than the wired version if you can believe that. So adding in the wireless benefit and then also the PowerPlay wireless uh, charging system which is just mind-blowingly awesome. Seriously like nobody can touch this and Logitech's competitors have tried and they've, they've given up. It didn't work out for them. I'm not going to name names, but um, they, didn't, they didn't work out. So, honestly, it's the total package. Um, there's only one problem. Uh, well, two problems. The one minor problem is I still feel like the G502 is just probably a little bit narrow compared to other mice, but overall, it's got the best feel, so I, I, I take the good with the bad, and overall, I think it's the best feeling mouse I've tested. But the other thing that is a major problem is the price. $150. Now Logitech honestly always comes out with a price that's a little bit too high and then the price drops pretty quickly after release. So I would not be surprised if this mouse is say $120 by mid-summer 2019. Um, but at $150 it's really going to price out most gamers and especially gamers who have the G502 wired edition and maybe paid $70 for that and now want the wireless they're going to say Oh gosh, that's, almost, that's over double the price and it's the same mouse. Well, it's not actually the same mouse at all, but it's a hard pill to swallow if you're used to paying $70 to $80 for a mouse, which is actually already a lot of money to pay for a mouse. So I think Logitech is pushing it. I think they're probably trying to recoup their investment in terms of the engineering of this mouse. Um, as I described earlier in this review, a lot went into making this look exactly like the old 502, but have everything different inside. Um, but hey, if you want a deal on a mouse, I would actually go and, and point you to the G703, which is about $80 right now. It doesn't have quite as comfortable a grip. It's not quite as sensitive a sensor. It's like a 12,000 DPI sensor. 
but it's got the same light speed system. It's got the same power play charging compatibility. It's, it's really nearly as awesome. Um, and it's about half the price. So that's actually the mouse I'm going to continue to recommend to most folks just because of the price point. I mean, it's literally like the same price as these two wired mice I have in the back over here. They're like the Corsair Glaive is 70 bucks and the Rokat Kona is 75. Spend 80 and get the G703. Or if you have $150 and you want the best gaming mouse in the world, go ahead and get the G502 Lightspeed. It passes the sniff test. It is the real deal. It's just kind of costly. And you kind of, you know, you, you kind of have to swallow that bitter pill if you want the best mouse in the world. So that's it. I'm going to give this four and a half out of five stars because it's basically the perfect mouse. It's just kind of expensive. Um, but otherwise, I like it. And hopefully you liked this review. If you did, please click like and subscribe. So I know that you want to see more videos just like this one. All right, I'll catch you next time. I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru.